Hi, welcome back to Reality Sports Athletics. My dad's going to be talking to us about how John 13, how Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Well, as Olson said, welcome back to Virtual Athletics. We're starting off week three now. And I just want to remind you that on Saturdays, we're going to be doing live athletic sessions through Zoom. So if you'd like to participate in that, please register. Uh, I'll have the link in the comments of this video. You can go on and register, and that way we can get you a, a Zoom link so you can join us Saturdays live. It was a lot of fun. We're going to keep doing that for the next number of Saturdays until we're done with this class. And so we'd love for you to participate in the message live, do the class live. Um, it was just a fun dynamic that we haven't gotten to do so far, and so I'd love for you to participate in that. We're going to continue on in our message series now, looking at the, the life of Jesus and how relationship with him affects the way that we live, train, and compete. And so we've been talking about that, and we're going to continue to. And so today I want to talk to you about a, a time right before Jesus went to the cross. Now, we just got done celebrating Easter this weekend, so we're going to kind of rewind a little bit in Jesus' life. On, on Sunday, we celebrated Jesus' rising from dead. We call it Easter. He, he resurrected. He's alive today in heaven at the right hand of God, ruling and reigning as the king of the universe. But we're going to look back a few days and, and look at a time where Jesus with it, was with his disciples, one of the last times in his life. And they had just had uh, a meal together. It was called the Last Supper. It was the last time they ate a meal together. And what Jesus did was something really, really significant that, that we just need to understand as athletes um, um, who Jesus is. Because what he did on this evening uh, just demonstrates the kind of, of man that he was, but also the type of God that he is. And, and for us to, to live for Jesus, for us to be in relationship with Jesus, we need to understand this. And then what's really cool is at the end of the message, we're going to tie it all together because what we see him do, he actually calls us to do as his followers. So we'll talk about how that plays into the way we live, train, and compete. So we're going to look at John chapter 13. And, and like I said, this took place on the night uh, before Jesus was crucified. He's He's in this upper room with his disciples. He's having the final meal. And at the end of the meal, Jesus gets up and he, he takes his outer cloth, cloth off and he ties it around his waist and he, he grabs a wash basin of water and he kneels down and he begins to wash the feet of his disciples. Now, you might be thinking, that's kind of weird. What, what's up with that? Think about this. Back in Jesus' time, there were no paved roads. People didn't have Air Jordans and Nikes and Adidas and things like we wear. Uh, they didn't even have socks. They wore sandals and they would walk around on these dirt roads and their feet would just get grimy and dirty. And the custom was when you went into a home, you would wash your feet as a sign of respect. But, but here's the thing. The, the, typically, the, the lowest person or the servant would be the one in the home who would wash their feet, or you would wash your own feet if there, there wasn't a servant. But Jesus demonstrates his heart for people, and he demonstrates his heart for his mission as he, the, the teacher, the rabbi, the, the one who was in the highest position between he and his disciples, he's actually the one that bends down, and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. And, and you can imagine they were pretty surprised by this, right? It would be like the, the principal of your school or your teacher or your mom or dad or, or someone who has authority over you, maybe even the president, bending down and washing your feet. That would be surprising. And, and the disciples were, were pretty surprised. And, and so I want to read with you what Jesus says or what the, the Bible says about this interaction. It says that Jesus came to Simon Peter. This is verse 6 of John chapter 13. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And so Peter was surprised. He's like, Lord, what? you're not the one that's supposed to be doing this. He, he, he showed his surprise right there. It goes on in verse 7. It says, Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. 
Verse 8, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You have no part with me. And so Jesus was not only serving his disciples in this moment, he was teaching them something about what he was going to do, what his mission was all about. See, what Jesus was doing in this night in the upper room was he was washing the feet of the disciples, but he was actually showing them that he was coming to serve them, to sacrifice for them. See, the, the disciples, every one of them, every one of us has a problem much worse than dirty feet. We've said that sin is a broken heart and, and it, it's a heart that's turned away from God. And another way to think about it is it's a dirty heart. It's a heart that's not pure. It's a heart that's not clean. See, a clean, pure heart desires to be in relationship with God. A clean, pure heart is one that's been made new by Jesus. And so what Jesus is saying is, not only am I washing your feet now, when I go to the cross and I take your sin upon me, and then I rise from the dead and I conquer sin and death once and for all, I am washing you. I am cleansing you. I'm making you new and pure. And so what he's telling Peter is, if I don't wash you, if, if you don't trust in me and allow my death to be for you and to put your faith and trust in me, then we can't have relationship because the truth is God is, is so pure and he's so holy and he's so different than us in our sin that we cannot have part with him. And so to be in relationship with him, to be reunited with God, our hearts, our souls need to be purified. They need to be cleansed. And that can only happen by trusting in Jesus, by, by telling him, Lord, I want what you did on the cross and in your resurrection to count for me. And so he was demonstrating that by being the one who would, who would stoop down and wash their feet. Because think about this, Jesus Christ was God. He had existed for all of eternity. And so not only did he bend down to wash their feet, he actually left heaven and he bent down and came to earth and he took on the, the, the role of a man. He became a man like us so that he could live a life in obedience to the Father he could die a, a death like, like we men would die, but he would raise again. He would conquer sin and death because he's God, and he would invite us into relationship. And so the first question I have to ask you, young athlete, is have you been washed by Jesus? Has he, has he not just washed your feet, but has he washed your heart? Has he washed your soul? Has, has he cleansed you from your sin? And the way you can answer yes is if you have put your faith and your trust in him. Do you, do you believe he is, is who he says he is? And do you honor him as God and as king? And if that answer is yes, then I want to assure you, you are washed and you are forgiven and you are God's son or daughter today. And that is such good news. Jesus goes on and he says that uh, in verse 15, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. See what Jesus is saying here at the end of this passage is that what, what he's done for us in, in serving us, and sacrificing, sacrificing himself for us and loving us this way is something that we receive from him. But then as we receive it and as we're in relationship with him, we now turn and get to do it outward to those around us. And so what he was telling his disciples is, what I have done for you, I'm setting an example that you can now do to others. And so we have the opportunity in this athletics class with those we're participating with in our schools when we get to go back to school in our families and our neighborhoods is to, to love people 
like Jesus loves. In fact, another part of Jesus' life, he told his disciples, the world will know you are my disciples by the way you love one another. And what he's saying is they will notice that you love each other differently. You love like I loved, meaning you love in a, in a serving way, in a, in a sacrificial way, in a way that, that puts your pride and your ego aside and, and stoops down and, and serves in really meaningful, tangible ways. So I just want to ask us a couple questions as we close here today. First is, what would it look like to love like Jesus loved? Like in this athletics class, how could you take on the role of the servant and wash your brother or your sister or even your parents' feet? Not literally, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna wash feet today in class, but but what would that look like? And when we're doing the workout, what would it look like to 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 stop and to serve like Jesus served? What would it look like to to love like Jesus loved. I want you to pause this video in a minute and have a discussion with those you're with and and talk about some ways you can do that. But one thing before we finish and have that discussion, remember, there's nothing we can do to earn Jesus' love. He's not saying, I've set this example and you have to do this to earn my love or to earn my affection. That's not what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, I have already done this for you. If you receive it, now you have the opportunity to go and do it with me and do it like me. But he's not in any way saying that we have to, to live like him or to, to earn anything, that, that he is going to keep score on a, on a scorecard to see how well we do. What he is saying is that we have the opportunity now to live like him and to love like him. So go ahead, after I pray, pause this, this video and have a discussion before we jump into our workout. How can you love and serve like Jesus today in class? And then how can you do it in your family, in your neighborhood, maybe when you get to, to be out of quarantine with your friends and, and your classmates again? What are some ways you can live and love and serve like Jesus. Let me pray. Father, we're so thankful that Jesus has come and, and has not just washed our feet, but, but he's washed our souls, that, that if we have trusted in him, we are pure. We are forgiven of our sin. And now we get to live by Jesus' example. We get to live and love and serve like he did. Would you help us do that? We can't do that on our own. We need your Holy Spirit's help, but you promised that that you would send your spirit to every one of yours who believes. And so we have your Holy Spirit if we're yours. Would you help us do that? Help us trust you. Help us live by your Holy Spirit, loving and serving in all the ways that Jesus uh, models for us and calls us to. We're so thankful that we get to be a part of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great discussion. We'll see you in the warm-up. Week three. Here we go. Here's our warm-up. It's called Roll the Die. You need to go into one of your board games and grab a, a single dice, a die. And what you're going to do is each person that's doing the workout this morning, you're going to roll the die. And whatever number comes up is how many push-ups, squats, V-ups, and ski jumps you'll do. Roll the die for each movement, and you'll do it three times to get a good warm-up. Okay, Haddon's going to demonstrate our roll the die warm-up. So, Haddon, once you roll the die, this is how many squats you have. Just drop it right there. Okay, two squats. Good form all the way down. Good, grab the die. Now, how many push-ups do you got? Two push-ups. Good job. One two okay roll the die how many v-ups just roll it nice and easy right there just drop it there you go okay two v-ups on your back two v-ups one two okay and then roll it one last time for how many ski jumps five ski jumps ready go one two three four 
five. Good job. You'll do that three times for our warm up. Here's our technique for today. We're gonna focus on the deadlift. Last week, we did sumo deadlift high pull. This time, we're just gonna do deadlift. A lot of it's the same. We're gonna focus on that angry gorilla back, and we're gonna lift some heavy weight. Our feet are a little closer. It's not sumo deadlift, it's normal deadlift. And so we're gonna work on that for five minutes today. We'll demonstrate here in a second. Okay, we're gonna demonstrate the deadlift. For our deadlift, we wanna be in good squat position. Our knees are bent a little bit. Remember, I've got a good angry gorilla back. My head is up. We've got a dumbbell for Olsen here. If you've got a dumbbell, that works. If not, you can get a paint can. If you need a little heavier weight, you can use a five gallon bucket or something a little heavier. Just something that's, that's a bit heavy that you can lift off the ground. So deadlift, we're in a good squat position. Angry gorilla back. I'm gonna squat down until I can grab my weight. My head's staying up. And I keep that angry gorilla back and I stand up. My arms are staying straight the whole time. And then when it's time to lower it, I keep that angry gorilla back. I stay in good position and I set it down. Come back up and down. Up and down. Good deadlifts. All right, Olsen and Haddon, let's see you guys try it. Stand in a good squat position. Feet a little further apart, Olsen. Head up. All right, good. Let's see it, Haddon. Oh, bring your handle up, Haddon. Good, Olsen. Head up. Good. Angry gorilla back, Hattie. Nice. Good. Keep your hands straight. Yep, keep going. A couple more. A couple more. Good work. So you're going to set a five-minute timer. You're going to practice deadlifts. If you can get heavier and heavier, feel free to do that. But let's work on a good deadlift. Here's our workout for Monday. It's going to be an AMRAP, as many rounds as you can in three minutes. You do five deadlifts. Find the weight that's good for you, whether it's your dumbbell or your paint can or your bucket. Then you'll do three bench or chair rows to, to get our pull strength up. And then you've got to do one cartwheel. Okay, that's one round, as many as you can in three minutes. Then you're going to rest for three minutes. Just take some time off. Catch your breath. And then you're gonna do it again for three minutes. So this is two AMRAPs in a row with a three minute rest. Five deadlifts, three bench rows, one cartwheel, as many rounds as you can in three minutes. Rest three minutes, do it again. Have fun and work hard. Okay, today's workout, remember, is an AMRAP for three minutes. You're gonna do five deadlifts, three bench or chair rows, and then one cartwheel. You'll do that as many times as you can in three minutes. Then you'll rest for three minutes and you'll do it again. Okay, so Olsen's gonna demonstrate. You ready, Olsen? Mm -hmm. Good, or is your angry girl back head up? Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, okay, bench rows or chair rows. Good, hustle, hustle, hustle. How fast can you get it? Three of them, pull. One, two, three. Okay, now a cartwheel. Hustle. On the cartwheel, just do the best you can. Now run back to your dumbbells. That's one round. How many can you get in three minutes? Today's game is a lot of fun. If you are by yourself, you're going to have to get your mom or dad to play this one, but I think they'll even enjoy it. It's called foxtails. What you're going to do is you're going to need a bath towel, and you're going to put it tuck it into the back of your shorts and have it hang out like a tail on a fox and then you get in a bear crawl position and you have to try and steal your partner's tail and so you've got to stay in your bear crawl position try and not let your knees touch the floor if they do a little bit that's okay try and keep them up and you've got to steal the towel every time you pull your partner's towel out that's a point for you now remember we've talked about today serving our opponents and so if you're a little older or a little stronger than your opponent, work with them. Have fun. Make this a fun game. Serve your opponent and your teammate by, by treating them the way you'd want to be treated. Don't just crush them. Don't make it miserable. Compete hard. But this is an opportunity for you to wash the feet of your opponent and your teammate like we talked about in our message. So have fun with it. Challenge yourself and really be a blessing. Be a servant to your teammate and your opponent. Okay, 
Today's game is foxtails. We're going to demonstrate it here. You're going to start in bear crawl position. The goal is to pull your opponent's tail off. So you guys ready? Three, two, one, bear crawl. Go, go, go. Get it, Hattie. Get it. Yeah, get the corner. Get the corner. Get the corner. There it is, Hattie. Grab it. Oh, good try. Get it. Oh, good job. So Hattie would get that point. We're going to demonstrate another variance on this game. Go ahead and put your tails back in. You can do this one standing. You've got to stay in athletic position. Hadn't come back. Ready? Shake hands. Give a good webby. All right. Go. This one, you got to move your feet. You can move their arms. Oh, good job, guys. Keep going. Good. Oh, that was a great one. Olsen got the point on that one. So have fun with this. Play a lot of different rounds. Keep score. And remember, this is an opportunity to bless and serve your opponent. Don't try and, and, and just crush each other. Work together. Have fun. Play hard serve one another.